Hello, everyone, and welcome to Twin, Twin Engines How to Stand Out from the Competition webinar. It's so great to see me, so many familiar faces here today. Let's get started. So, just how many marketing messages do we see in a day? Consensus says somewhere between 3,000 and 20,000. So that number not only does include ads, but includes every time you pass by a label in a grocery store. All the ads in your mailbox, whether you've seen them or not, the label on everything you wear, the condiments in your fridge, the cars on the highways, and I could go on and on and on. The fact that you and the message or a brand name or logo are in the same proximity for you to see, it, it, it doesn't even mean that you saw it, right? So no one can really process that many exposures. We can't notice, absorb, or even judge that those 300 or 3,000 visual audio exposures every day, let alone 20,000. So one of the biggest challenges for brands to understand is you're not only competing against your competition, you're competing with the daily noise that we are all exposed to. So when someone's thinking about your products or services and who you compete with, they're also thinking about 500 other things. So the bottom line is there is a lot of competition out there and it's getting harder and harder for brands to stand out. Everything looks alike and there's a lot of it out there. Uh, on the topic of looking alike, um, uh, Lori and I know a lot about what it takes to stand out. Being identical twins, of course, we are constantly being compared. We spent our entire lives looking for ways to stand out, even though we look the same. We tried a lot of things, different hair, different clothes, different careers, even different friends. But in stepping back, it's, it's the acceptance that we do look alike and do look the same and, and knowing that we need to look deeper into what really makes us different. It's how we ultimately stand out, right? Because the way something looks is just one of many factors when we talk about standing out. We all think of our brands, we all think they're unique, right? We all think that, I mean, shouldn't it be obvious to others why ours is better, smarter, or more powerful over another? But it's not obvious. The first step is to understand that most people and most brands look the same. The funny thing about this picture is, to be honest with you, I have no idea which one I am. Well, I'm Winnie Brignac Hart, and here with me today is Lloyd Brignac Lee. Um, we launched Twin Engine about 25 years ago um, as a traditional agency, um, and we've had incredible success and now focused on helping companies adjust to the changing landscape of marketing. And together we bring a right brain, left brain approach to helping companies and brands stand out, take off, and stay on course. Let's look at what we're going to talk about today. Today we'll talk about standing out against the competition and knowing your key differentiators, what it is that makes you different. Achieving distinction in today's marketplace isn't easy, but it can be done. And it starts with defining your company's purpose and identifying the areas in your market in which you already have significant advantage. So the goal of today's webinar is to talk about making lasting impressions that are top of mind. We're going to review the eight alignment indicators on your True North radar. We're going to talk about ways to stand out and get noticed. We're going to identify growth opportunities, and we're going to learn how to uncover niche markets and other new opportunities that you may have not considered in the past. And really thinking about what are some out of the box ideas to increase market share and a, and a way to identify the unique offers that separate you from the competition. Today's webinar is part of eight part series that focuses on discovering your true North advantage so your brand can stand out, take off, and stay on course. For those of you that weren't in the last webinar, um, you can find it um, on TwinEngine.com, and that webinar was about how to get more leads on your webinar, how to get more leads on your radar. And, uh, and thanks for everyone on, on, in the webinar today for all your feedback and questions prior to the webinar today, and I hope that we're able to bring your questions uh, to benefit everyone. And, of course, you can always reach me at Winnie at TwinEngine.com anytime. Everyone okay with that? All right, great, let's get started. So one thing's certain, um, you can't expect to stand out from the crowd using the same marketing strategy everyone else does. If you, if you wanna transform your organization, you need to first transform your marketing. So if you can think for a second, let, let's, let's talk about, I like race cars. <laughs> so let's talk a little about, about race cars and let's just imagine for a minute that 
um, you, you race race cars for fun on the weekend. And, and of course there are rules, right? So let's say those rules were that, you know, your car that you're driving and everyone else's has to have like, let's say a 75 horsepower engine, right? And, and really skinny tires. It sounds kind of funny with a race car. But think about this race from the perspective that every aspect of your car would be regulated, right? So a lot of rules. And knowing that, that, that the races who you were racing against, so they would always be really close and that it'd be tough to win. So now imagine that there were no rules, right? And you dropped a, let's say, 400 horsepower engine in your car, right? Much bigger. And added like big gripping road tires. And everyone else was following those same old rules, right? Everyone else had that 75 horsepower engine and they had, they had those really skinny tires. So you can kind of imagine the outcome, right? So you'd have a big advantage. Your car would be in front of the pack and stay there. And you'd bring trophies home every week. Marketing the way everyone else does will keep your business stuck in the slow lane, right? And if you stick to a typical small business marketing strategy, you'll get the same results. So if you really want to stand out from the competition, stop doing what everyone else is doing and start using strategies that help you stand out from the competition. Think way out of the box on this one. Everyone with me? Awesome. Uber. Right. When I, when I think about Uber, I really don't think about service, even though I use Uber all the time. And it's it's I mean, I think it's an incredible resource. I think about the idea behind it, that it solves a big problem. Right. That people have places to go and there are a lot of people that are available to take them places. So welcome to the share economy and imagine what other businesses like Uber, like that Uber idea is inspiring. You know, anything you need whenever, wherever you need it. So they looked at transportation in a way that others didn't, right? They created a technology that would launch them into a space where others weren't. They stopped doing what everyone else was doing and it worked. So when I'm thinking about Uber, I'm also thinking about taxis, which is better? Uh, better price, reputation, you know, I know that Uber's had some challenges recently, recently around that. Is it excellent? Yes. Is it customer service? Is it higher quality? Uber taxis for Uber? The choices are straightforward. Um, but, but about brands that sell the same things for the same price, reputation, customer service, quality, it's like everyone's saying the same thing, right? And this is confusing and frustrating process for a prospect that they don't, they don't know which one to choose. So I'd like you, if you could just a second, take a minute and uh, grab a pen and write this question down, right? If you have a sticky note, that'd be awesome. And right on that sticky note, what is the reason someone would choose my brand over another? What is the reason someone would choose my brand over another? Okay. Have I got that? And if you would stick it somewhere where you'll see it. Um, the first things you're going to start thinking about are, you know, uh, probably are tangible like product, a service, location, but when you think deeper about why someone chooses you, it often comes down to emotional reasons. You know, they, they like you or, or they trust you. Maybe, maybe you make their job easier. So I want you to put that sticking out somewhere where you see it. And, um, you know, let, let's do a second one. All right. Everyone got a little pen to write down a second sticky note or just jot down a note somewhere. Um, write down what is the reason someone would choose the competition over my brand or my company? What is the reason someone would choose the competition over my brand? Okay, so you got two sticky notes. You got, what is the reason someone would choose my brand over somebody else's? And then you have the opposite. Spend a few days thinking about it and, and maybe ask around, you know, and then, then start comparing the differences between the two. I'll tell you from this exercise, it's really inspiring and often like, completely surprising about what you'll discover. Let's take a, take a minute to look at twins, identical twins, and think this through as if a brand were a person. And sometimes it's easier to think of your, a brand as a person than it is to think of a brand as a brand, because you can really think about what the personality would be of that person when you think about it as a person, if you think about a person as a brand. Okay, I hope this is fun for you guys. Here we go. All right, okay. 
So I have to give full credit to, to Martin Scholler, who um, who created a book. I don't know if you've seen it. It's uh, it's called Identical Portraits of Twins. It's a really fascinating book about just taking side by side images of identical twins. So I want to engage you right now and ask you a question. Right? What's the difference in these two? Right? And I'm going to point out a couple things that I see. You know, uh, the guy on the right, maybe his eyes are a little bit closer together. He's obviously got his hair sticking up right there. And the guy on the left, his face to me looks a little rounder, kind of seems a little bit more relaxed. I don't know if it's his eyes or just the way his face looks. The funny thing is we can't help ourselves, right? We're looking at these images and we immediately start looking, what's different, right? What is different about these guys? And I want to ask you a question, okay? So if you were looking at these two guys and imagine their brands, who would you choose if you were looking for someone to be your executive assistant? And take a minute to, actually, you know what? There's a little um, uh, place in your, in your GoToWebinar control panel. Tell me, tell me on the, on, in that little panel if, if your answer would be left or right, right? So would it be the guy on the left or the guy on the right that you'd hire for your, your executive assistant? Okay, awesome. We've got a couple of things here. Okay, looks like look like looks like the left is winning here, but it looks like that. Um, it depends on what you were hiring him for. Good point. Depends on what kind of personality you were looking for. The guy on the left looks kinder. The guy on the right looks more serious. Maybe he would be more of a go-getter. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like that guy on the left. I don't know if who picked who, but it looks like. Looks like the guy on the left is winning. Awesome. Wow, they're really identical, aren't they? All right, you want to do another one? Great. All right. So uh, to me, uh, this one's a little bit easier. Um, I kind of feel like they're almost thinking about two different things. It's almost like they're thinking about two different things. It's like... Mm, the guy on the left, longer face, um, he feels more intense to me. Um, and the guy on the right, he just, I don't know, he just feels kinder. And there's something kind of like hum like he's got a bit of humor in his expression. Um, and I want to thank everybody um, that, that looked at this image beforehand, and a bunch of you um, already sort of threw your hat in and choosing this one. And um, So if, if the question was, if we were talking to these guys about a business opportunity, right, whatever it might be, which one would they trust and which one would they feel more comfortable with? And the unanimous vote was the guy on the right. And a lot of the comments we got were, you know, like he's, and we asked sort of, well, what is he, if you could think about what he's thinking about, what is he thinking about? And they said, you know, I've got this, you know, he's saying to us, I understand you. He's saying, I'll work with you. And he's saying, you can trust me. And think about how similar they look. And the results, oh, I just noticed that the guy on the, the left's nose kind of is a different shape than the guy on the right. But just think for a second about if you were, if your brand was being compared to your competitor's brand and the slightest differences would make the difference in why someone would choose someone over another. We, we, we copy each other, right? And, and, and we look at other brands and, and, and you know, we look at what's working for them and then we do it. But the question are, who are you as a brand? And, and the challenge is not to follow and not to look like everybody else. It, it's to know your brand at an emotional level so you can begin to understand how others perceive it, but you have to understand it. And being a twin, look, I get it, okay? It's easy for me to see myself outside of myself and, and I can see those subtle differences. And, and I understand by observing how others are, how really, how really we, both Lori and myself, are perceived by others. And, and what would happen if you could understand your brand and, and even yourself at that level, right? Because, I mean, be you, everyone else is taken. I mean, it's a, really, it's a really big thought. And about really one of the keys to being you is understanding you and understanding your brand by seeing it from the outside, seeing your brand outside of itself, right? Not everyone feels this way, and, and not everybody kind of gets that whole BU thing, right? 
And, and often a strategy like this one would be leveraging equity from another powerful brand, right? I mean, how many swooshes have you seen out there? You know, talk about logo infringement. Everybody wanted for many, many, many years a Nike swoosh as part of their logo. And of course, I mean, I know and love Starbucks and you're right here, you're looking at um, a bunch of different brands in, in Asia and how, um, you know, Starbucks obviously is, is being copied a lot there. Um, and, you know, one thing to take note is, is, is the, a brand is who you are, okay? And marketing is what you do. Actually, if, if you have that pen still handy, write this down. Marketing is what you do and a brand is who you are. And this is really important because this is a confusing concept to many people. And I think this is one thing that companies get kind of hung up on is that focusing on the marketing, right? And not really thinking about what the brand is. And the brand is an entire experience, right? For me with Starbucks, a brand is, is from the moment I pull up in front of Starbucks to walking in the door, to standing in line and talking to the people that I know and how they spell my name. And, um, and the, it's the whole experience of Starbucks. It's, it's way beyond a logo, right? So a brand might look like another brand on the outside, but not align with the whole brand experience on the inside. And when I think about brands, I think about Steve Jobs. You know, I, I am still so inspired by that man. And, you know, it's, it's his vision and his brand. You know, I, I've talked a lot about organizations, brands and personal brands. But one thing to think about, if you're the leader in an organization, these two brands have to align, right? Who you are as a leader and who you are as a company. Because if they don't, there's gonna be a disconnect. And this is where purpose comes in. What's yours? Do you know? What is it about your brand that is above and beyond making money or selling products? And does everyone in the organization know? I mean. Everyone knew and still knows Steve's purpose, right? He had this whole mission and purpose about removing the barrier of having to learn. And his purpose was infused into everything Apple does and still is. I mean, I mean, hey, did, did you read a manual when you got your first iPhone? No, it was intuitive. It was like the technology just disappeared. Discover the purpose of your organization and discover your purpose. And it's another way to stand out. And then there's your story. Okay. Uh, we all know Steve was a great storyteller. And, and one thing to think about when you're working on presentations um, for marketing your product, think about looking back at some of those old Apple presentations and how simple they were. And it was all about telling stories. Right. It wasn't necessarily about the technology, because have you ever been in a situation at work or somewhere where or maybe out, out and you're purchasing something and someone's trying to tell you, you know, um, and you're just not connecting with that person. And you're like not following them. And it's dry and boring and informational. And and, and I don't even know what they're trying to say. And but, you know, my, my, you know of course, I'm back to the 20,000 messages right from that Times Square picture. It's like my mind is all over the place. And, and then there's that person that starts telling you a story, right? And, and, it, and, it, and it's not all about the information. It's about they're telling you a story. They're, they're telling you something you can relate to, but they're still talking about the same thing, right? But here's the difference. You're interested and you're engaged and you remember it because it's a story. So when you think about developing content for your brand, think about telling stories, right? And spend some time talking about and thinking about with your team, what's your story, right? Actually, that's another thing. Jot that down, right? Don't write that down with your pen. What's your story, or right? What's my story? Because every brand, every person has one, or sometimes many. Because you know what? We, 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 we all want to be top of mind, right? We work really hard to build these businesses and to build these marketing strategies and these brands. And we, we, want, we want to be top of mind. And when you think about, you know, we, we've talked about, you know, you've, you've connected your purpose and your story and, and how to get, you know, to the decision making part of a relationship, right? But think about it. Think about the journey of, you know, this journey to top of mind as an uphill battle from the heart to the head, 
okay? Top of mind, it is an uphill battle from the heart to the head. Because first, you need your customers to connect with you and maybe even love you, right? We've been talking a lot about emotional things. Connecting at an emotional level or at some level. And then you need them to think of you first when they're in need of your product or service, right? And no matter how far in the future that might be, right? And that being said, you need you need a long-term plan of attack, not to, to not just get top of mind, but to stay there. And, and the key to it is really simple. It's nurture, nurture. So if we think about what that word means, right? It's the process of, it's a process of caring. It's a process of, 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 of caring for and, and encouraging growth or development of someone or something, right? So it's nurturing. It's, it's about the growth and encouragement of someone or something. It's not about selling. Nurturing is about building relationships so that when someone is ready to buy, you are top of mind. And this is what it looks like, right? This is, this is, this is the, 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 what we call the funnel. And here's the thing. You have to stand out at every phase of the relationship. And the, the idea is to convert from the top strangers all the way down to the bottom promoters. Um, just for everyone who wasn't in the last webinar, you can read a lot more about and listen to a lot more about this process in the, um, the get more leads on your radar webinar. It's, it's on twinengine.com, so you can check that out and download it. Um, or you can just download the PDF. Because what we're really talking about here is what, what we call a preferred passenger, right? We're talking about ideal leads. We're talking about the people that are the right fit and the right value and the right relationship for you. And, and, and here's the thing, you have to resist the temptation to talk and speak to everybody in the same way, right? Because you don't want to speak to everybody. You know, we call those uh, preferred passengers, of course, which are ideal leads, frequent flyers, which are people you have long-term relationships with, all the way down to stowaways, which um, I'm sure you all have some of those. Stowaways are high maintenance, low value, either prospects or clients. And, and really think about um, the, this concept of nurturing and spend some time listening to that webinar to, to know specifically what to do when to convert each of those from strangers to visitors to leads to customers to promoters and standing out at the same time. Don. Don Draper. Um, so people often ask me, you know, what is about advertising that really influences people to make a decision? And I think Don said it the best, and, and it's happiness. It's, it's really simply happiness. And something to think about is, is this whole idea, and this might sound kind of funny, but people. But because behind every person, prospect, relationship, every single person you have in that database you're looking at, they're, they're people, right? There's a person in each one of those. And that person, they have frustrations, they've got obligations, opportunities, there's joy in, lot, in their lives, and there's also fear. And, and what Don is saying, uh, he's really saying that very thing, that, that if you can fix one of those challenges, if you can solve one of those problems, you win. And they're happy, right? And when they're happy, they're reassured that they've made the best decision, and, and you've essentially delivered peace of mind. And hey, now you have a new promoter. So think about thinking about emotions when you work on this concept of standing out and you really look at how you stand out and how you can stand out. And think about happiness. Think about, you know, if everything you did and everything you said from a marketing perspective just made people happy and solved problems, it all, it's all easy. So in talking about happiness and talking about promoters and all these things that lead to conversions, I want you to think about, about your advantage. You know, what, it is it, what is it about you that you deliver that aligns with what prospect needs are that your competitors don't, right? When we're all talking about happiness in the search of, we're looking to fulfill a need with an offer. 
And, and like I said, it's called turn the advantage and it's where your offer and what your prospect needs overlap and it's something that your com competition doesn't. It's like Uber. Someone needs a driver and you can look on a map app to find a driver near you and select one. It's, I mean, there, there's a big difference in that when you're waiting for a cab and you never know where they're going or when they're going to get there and not knowing who they are or what rating they have. But Uber knows it's True North Advantage. Uh, this is one of my favorite sayings, you know. Um, Yellow Cab didn't know what Uber knew, right? And, and sometimes we can't see what's going on around us. And this is an important lesson that Lori and I learned at a very early age from our dad. That we never knew what an important lesson it would be in the future of our business. That, you know, if, if you went into every opportunity thinking that you didn't know what you didn't know, you'd be able to see things in a way that others don't, that others can't. And it's a great thing to think about, in, especially, in, honestly, in any relationship that you have, because we, we think we know, which prevents us from seeing things as they might really be. So when you think about standing out, think about maybe is there something that I don't know that I'm not seeing that is, that is keeping me from standing out? Because, you know, you, there's things that you're just not seeing that are off your radar. And for horses, which I just showed you, it's important during racing because it's all about you know, that horse staying focused so they stay in line with the jockey and they, you know, win the race. But, but, but when, you know, at times you need to take those blinders off and explore what might be missing. What's miss Think about what's missing in your industry and in the minds of your prospect that you can leverage to stand out. And, and, and what opportunities exist that you can't see and what's off your radar that you're missing. You got to keep this in mind, though, you know, that marketing can't fix a bad product or service. So sometimes you have to get the product right before you begin to market it. Before the emergence of social media and collaborative marketing, it, it was so much easier to persuade a buyer. And I know we are all feeling that right now. But today, Yelp can put you out of business in about 48 hours. We, we, we've all become critics uh, inside and outside of our organizations because, you know, if you don't tell the truth, someone is certainly going to tell it for you. So make sure that product is great before you begin to market it. Because, you know, when you're off course, you're out of alignment. And I always think about this whole alignment thing. And a lot of people call it balance. And I really don't, don't really necessarily believe in balance. I really believe more in alignment. Because what would, what would your organization look like if everything you did was in an alignment and guided by that thing we're calling True North, which is that True North is... It's like an internal compass. It's like it pulls you towards your purpose and helps you as a leader or a marketing director stay on course. Because when you're aligned with who you are and, and how you express that truth to the world, I mean, obviously you take off and you stay on course and, and you really get to where you want to go. It's not a destination or a goal. It's, it's your purpose. And it's why you do what you do beyond making money or selling products. It's, it's a bigger vision of you, your company. And it's, it's really what makes you unique from everyone else and what makes you stand out. I want you to think a minute about being off course. There's a study that, that was done. And this, this, it really fascinates me because, you know, it, the study was essentially saying that, that you're going to be off course 90% of the time, right? This is obviously about flying, but I kind of feel that way as a brand too, right? Because we're always trying to get back on course. So, okay, so before a plane takes off, right, the, the pilots have a flight plan, right? But during the course of that flight, there are things like wind and rain and turbulence and air traffic and error and, and tons of other factors that act upon that plane. And most of the time that plane is not even on the path they're supposed to be on. And this is where pilots come in and, and their role is to continuously adjust based on whatever those conditions are. And I don't know about you, but I hope you've read Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And you'll know this is a really big topic in his book, you know, because, you know, he asked the question, you know, what is it that makes high achievers different? And I think that if we accept it as expect, accept, accepted that, we as leaders or entrepreneurs or marketing directors, organizations, if we're off course 90% of the time, this could be a huge place of strength and competitive edge. Because if we accept that we're off course most of the time, especially with leads, we could focus on following a system. 
um, we would certainly get more leads on our radar, right? And you'll hear about this in the leads in the leads uh, webinar. But but being off course is a great thing because it keeps us on our game. Really looking at the constant movement of what we see and experience and making constant adjustments, all the while staying off course and standing out. So think about it. We're we're gonna we're talking about standing out, and we're gonna, you're going to get to a place where you discover what it is that truly makes you stand out, and then something's going to happen and you're gonna to have to readjust. Um, you'll see this in the recording, and this is what we call the True North Radar. And it, it gives you indicators, eight indicators, matter of fact, that are in addition to stand out, to really think about the alignment between brand, strategy, and purpose. So when we talk about standing out, we talked a lot about brands, and we understand that piece. We've talked about purpose, you know, what it is that you do beyond making money or selling products. But think about strategy too. So how does standing out align with what your business strategy is? And are those two things in sync? So if you stand out like Uber, you know, maybe it's uh, your, Uber's your personal driver. Let's just say that's their true north advantage. Um, is that aligned with who they are as a business? In their case, it does because each Uber driver is essentially an entrepreneur, and actually I think that it was just released that they're now full-time employees, but that each Uber is independent and it is in perfect alignment with what their, with their advantage is. So think about that. This is just one example of, of an assessment of a company on where they are in terms of their True North radar and where they rate on different things. And how this essentially works is it's zero in the middle, five on the outside, so zero being non-existent and five being absolutely 100% um, great. And you can see that, that, that companies do are off balance, right? They're not in alignment. And in this case, this company did not know what their purpose was. Uh, their understanding of their reputation awareness from an exterior perspective was about halfway. Their, their brand, they know they need to do a lot of work there. But the most important thing that we talked about in this, with this particular company is about discipline mindset. So once you discover what your true north advantage is and really uncover how you stand out, it has to become a part of everything you do, right? It has to become part of everything you say, how it's communicated inside the company and outside the company. Um, you can look on TwinEngine.com and, and use some of the tools we have centered around some of these activities. Um, ultimately, you want to have a, a full plan that brings your brings your strategy together with your brand, with your purpose, and to think about you know how does your team align and 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 what are the things that help people, individuals in the company stand out, and how does that align with how your company stands out? You know, think about looking at at, at you know telling everyone in the company what these things are and really bring it into every aspect of what you do and absolutely understanding what your advantage is over the competition. You know, where, where what people are looking for, what you offer a line that your com competitors do not. And then again, creating measurement techniques to really think about how you're going to measure these things within your company. You know, if this is what happens. Um, you know, we've been in business for 25 years and I will say to you that the biggest challenge that most organizations have is they really don't spend the, the time on the front end to really um, understand what it is that makes them stand out and what their advantage is. And, you know, to really take the time to build the foundation, you know, that, that and create a clear message that cl clearly expresses what those things are. Because if you're confusing, you're losing, right? You, you have to be very, very clear and very simple in your message so that you don't confuse that buyer. Because remember what happens when they're frustrated? Right? Go back to the emotions. You want to make it easy for them. You want to make it easy for them to make, make the best decision. Because marketing is not a standalone function. Um, you know, it, it's in everything an organization is and does. And, and you, you'll hear a lot from me that I don't believe that marketing is a department anymore, that it's a part of everything we do in our companies and our brands because you know, it doesn't work that way anymore. You know, social media has been a big push that's pushed us out into everyone having a function in terms of telling stories about companies. 
And when, when companies invest the time to align their brand and strategy and purpose, you know, it, it builds success, right? And, and, and if you realize that getting off course is a given and a gift, you know, it keeps you from, from getting constantly distracted, right? I mean, I mean, did I just lose you? You know, this happens to all of us. You know, it happens especially to um, the people that we're looking at in terms of prospects. And we talked about in the very beginning about the 20,000 messages and, and, and images that we get every day. And it's, it's very difficult to stay focused. We hear this every day. You know, people just don't understand us, our value and what we do, but we are absolutely the best at it. Here's an opportunity for you. Really think about what that is and think about why don't they understand? Is it because we don't have the discipline mindset or the plan to communicate that? Are we just not, are we not communicating to the things that they really need? Are we not communicating in a way, if we're not communicating in a way that people really engage with us, we're not telling stories, right? Are we not thinking of these prospects as people? It's not easy, right? Henry Ford said it really well that, you know, the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. So it's times of challenge. It's times when we can't control our message anymore, right? When it's time that you know, all of us that are in marketing are having a more and more difficult time doing more with less resources. But we really have everything we need, right? And we need to look at the challenge as an opportunity, right? Because every challenge presents an opportunity to us. And it's it's how we deal with that challenge that really brings the character into it, right? Because we're all building character in our organizations, right? We want to we wanna be true to who we are. We want people to understand the value that we do, right? So how do we get started? So the first and foremost thing is I want you to think about, you know, what standing out really means to you and your brand. You know, do, do, does it mean... Well, first of all, you have to define your brand as well. And remember, it's who you are, and marketing is what you do. Um, think about what it means to stand out. Think about um, what does it mean? Does it mean standing out against the competition? Does it mean um, you know, standing out um, in, in your particular location? It can mean a lot of things. So think about what standing out means to your brand. And think on your own. You know, be different, right? Don't follow everyone else. You know, think on your own and be okay with decisions that might seem uh, seem not reasonable or not something that you would typically think and, and be more prepared than everyone else. Um, I read a quote uh, a couple of days ago about, you know, in business, you know, be twice as much prepared than the competition and, and you will come to the game to win. And, and think about that from a marketing perspective too, right? Know the competition inside and out. Spend as much time on your marketing as you spend on their marketing, right? Because it's all competitive. So to really position yourself properly, you've got to know what they're doing. Run your business contrary to your industry, right? So you may be in, in um, the financial industry. Look at retail and see what you can learn from them, right? If you're, if you're in uh, the oil and gas industry, Think about, well, what can we learn from maybe banking? You know, how can we leverage what's happening in different industries to really learn and from our own, right? I know one really great thing to do, and I do this all the time, is you know, go to the bookstore and look at the magazine rack and pick up some magazines that that may be completely, you know, distant from what you actually do, right? Maybe they're strategy. Uh, magazines that are directed to other specific industries and see what you can borrow from them to really be different because you know your, your, your um, competition will not be doing that. Leverage online intelligence. Everything that's being said about you, your brand, your products, your service is out there forever. But here's the point. So is your competitions. Go find out what people are saying about them and leverage those opinions, leverage those reviews to really talk about why you're different than them, right? Become and remain a thought leader. You know, be that leader in your organization, be that leader in your industry, right? LinkedIn, blogs, Twitter, I mean, leverage social media to, re to really be that thought leader and establish yourself there. And understand your true north advantage, understand what it is that you do that aligns with what the people behind those prospects 
need, right? How do you make them happy? And how do you do it in a way that the competition does not? Become the standard in your industry. Every industry has one. And now with emerging tools like social marketing, you can compete at the same level those big boxes do. So find a way to do it and do it. And be you, like really, you know, everyone else is taken. Be you. You know, I, it's just all about really, you know, what do you need to, to stand out, right? And, and to take off. Because, you know, above the clouds, I mean, I love flying. Obviously, I love, I love the whole concept of flying. Because when you're below the clouds, there's a lot of turbulence, right? And everybody's down there. But once you get above the clouds, it's over and it's blue skies and there's no one there and stay on course. All right, ready for some questions. And I've got a couple here. Um, okay, what do you mean by nurturing? How does that work? Is it a campaign? That's a great question. So nurturing, right? Um, it, it's like marketing with a magnet it, instead of a, a sledgehammer, right? And, and, and it starts by um, identifying and building uh, some content or strategy around that ideal lead. We talked about preferred passenger, right? And, and to try to not market to stowaways or, or, you know, to really, or cargo, right? To nurture, right? We want to, it's all about them. It's all about that ideal lead. It's about making them happy. All right. Um, run your business contrary to your industry. How do I do that and not confuse my sales team? Um, well, I mean, look at other industries for innovation, right? Look, just look at other industries, read case studies. And if, you know, like I said just a few minutes ago, read magazines from other industries. Um, you know, attend an, another industry trade show. Um, again, like I said, that, you know, your competition will definitely not be doing that. So definitely a way to uh, gain competitive edge and stand out. Uh, how long does it take to see results from a lead generation campaign? Okay, we talked about the funnel. Um, it takes time, okay? And I know a lot of people, like, you know, six months into it want to jump out because they're not seeing the return. It takes eight to ten months. It takes it takes a while, you know. You should start seeing results after four or five months, um, you know, but I will say a little tip on this. Do not ever purchase lists. That's where a lot of people get stuck on that. Um, and then really look at, when you look at your lead generation command, really think about nurturing, look at the funnel, look at ways to convert at each of those uh, positions and look at how you make each person happy and stand out at each stage. It's going to be different. And of course, you're only going to be marketing to that. What? Yep. Ideal lead. Okay. Number four, um, I'm a marketing manager at a company that is in a commodity space. How do I stand out there? Um, you know, it goes back to understanding what the competition's doing, you know, um, uh, you know, Dig deep in the competitions, what their brand's doing, their campaigns, and look for ways you can share that that true north advantage, you know, where what you do aligns with what your prospect is looking for and is something that your competition doesn't have. Those things exist. Find out what it is. Uh, that's a funny one. Um, how did people tell you apart when you were young? <laughs> well, they didn't. Um, uh, we were called the twins. Um, and some of our family members actually still call us 20, T-W-I-N-N-Y, 20. Um, but we didn't know any different, you know, and I, I can stand, I can understand how you might think it's kind of odd, but, you know, it, it, it was a wonderful thing that we were never alone and there was always someone there and now working together, it's just such a gift. It is such a gift because we truly bring that left brain, right brain way of thinking to, to, uh, and I'm just so thankful for the opportunity to share what we do and help people. And I mean, we're here to talk about, you know, standing out and I hope that you learned a lot of great things today and it's really cool. Thank, thanks for that question. So I just, you know, thank you everyone for attending uh, today's webinar. Um, it's just great to, to see a bunch of you I haven't seen in a while and, and, and thanks again for coming back and a recording is going to be available for download, of course. 
Um, we will be sending a, a three question follow up email to you and, and would love your feedback along with a link to download the recording. You can share it. And, and always you don't hesitate to reach out to us at Winnie at TwinEngine.com. That's W-I-N-N-I-E at TwinEngine.com. And we look forward to seeing you in the next webinar. Um, it's going to be about authentic messaging. And we're going to talk about ways you can share your story, right? Help you with that thing we talked about with storytelling and really discover your authentic voice. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.